Hi. Hi. I'm oh. John. Oh, hi, John. How are you? Oh, I'm Pradeep. How are you? Nice to meet you. How do you say your last name, by the way? Is it Sandra Rarajan? That's the revenge we take on Swedish people for using the word J as Yami. That's Sandra Rarajan. Sandra Rarajan. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Absolutely. Okay. My last name is Bach, like the composer. Like Bach, like the way no, you not like Bach. Like right. the. Okay. So, uh, thank you for meeting with me. Uh, you've heard about our reputation uh, as a test lab, and I want to get to know you a little bit more about what you're trying to accomplish when you say that, that you need some testing done. So, I'm going to take some notes, yeah, sure. and I just want you to talk about why you think you need testing uh, done on this project. Okay, so uh, you know, just to give you a little bit of background, we, we started off a few years ago and our company has grown rapidly, for which we, uh, you know, because of writing code faster or something like that, there were a lot of bugs that came out, that's when we realized we need some testing help. And we have right now empaneled quite a few vendors into our, into our company. Uh, there, there are a lot of companies already claiming to do good testing. So, uh, but, but what we see is because of the growing needs, we want to try to constantly talk to people and, and see what are they offering. So you're here because we just want to check what you're offering, not necessarily that we want something, but if we you know, might get interested about what you do, then maybe we can think about it. So, so now, given this is the context, you can kind of tell me how different are you from all our existing Okay, vendors who have, who have already empowered. Okay, tell me a little bit more about about what you think good testing is. You say that some companies have claimed to do good testing. Tell me about some of those companies and what they claimed, or or what your notion is of, of good testing. Yeah, well, uh, they, they're uh, so they first claimed that they'll make our software bug free, and they looked at our and, and <coughs> as they came in, they've been I believe writing a lot of uh, test cases and automation. And and all that stuff, which is, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to tell you, as, as a business guy, I, I'm not too sure about what good testing is, but, I, but all I care for is, is my company growing well, the way it's supposed to. That's, that's what I'm caring about. And, 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 and so far the companies, have, you know, the uh, testing uh, services companies who have, who have been enrolled, uh, they would cause trouble, but I wouldn't say it's been, it's, it could have been better, but I don't exactly know what the better means in the context. Maybe you have some ideas about it which you can share. So that's, that's uh, uh, where we are right now. Have you hired a testing company before? You've had experience with some? Yeah, yeah of course. We, we have a few companies working with us. Uh, well, it, but, but the way they're working with us is like they provide stuff. So that's the way it is. But we've never had a company come and consult us and, and change the way we test and all that stuff. I believe things are going very good, so why should we change? You know, that's the simple thing. Okay, so you believe things are going good, I mean with your products and services? Yeah, I mean, our company is making a lot of money. So that's one indication of saying, okay, things are going good, right? So, you're, what are you worried about? You're worried about, I, I wrote down that you, are, are you growing well? Are we growing well? Yes, you're right. I mean, like, we, we keep getting a lot of funding for the way we're growing, mm -hmm. and we're expanding to several countries and all that stuff. <clears throat> and when we're, we're expanding to several countries, there are uh, things like, you know, there are country-specific things for which, you know, using our existing team might not be quite reliable, so we're looking for, for options where some companies can can do some good testing for us. I mean, I keep saying good, but I don't know what it means. Okay. So that's that's what we're doing, right? Okay. So is it a would you could characterize it as a product or a service online? Yeah, we we're like if you know something like eBay. Have you heard about eBay? Yeah, I've heard about eBay. eBay. Yeah. So, so, so like eBay. Yeah, yeah. So so we're like eBay, John. Got it. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a competitor to eBay? Uh, yes, if we are entering into the U.S. market. Uh, we will definitely be, so that's... Ah, if you enter the U.S. market. Yeah, yeah. If What's your biggest market now? Uh, it's in India. Okay. Uh, there's like 1.2 billion population, and as we okay. speak, they're producing more babies there. Got it. Okay, okay. so more potential users. More potential users, you're yeah. right. Like okay. There's a massive market there. Okay. 
Um, so you said that you, <coughs> would you be able to recognize good testing when you saw it? You said you weren't really sure what good testing is. So I just want to clarify. That's, that's very nice. Nobody has asked me that question. Uh, so so how, how should you think as a CIO I recognize good testing? No, I've never been asked that. That's, a, that's the question you should be asking uh, any company that sits across from you like this. Uh, good testing to me and in our company okay. is a service that provides a sense of where the risks are after revealing uh, a, a large degree of different kinds of problems. To give you an opportunity to say, that's a problem we care about. That's a problem we don't care about. So testing is a discovery process. It's the pursuit of truth, right? It's the, the headlights in the project. You want to know where you stand and what's likely to happen. That, that isn't just a process. It's a mindset and it's a skill set. Well, I think I know what you're saying. I mean, we do have a dashboard from, from the test teams. We have the uh, test cases, pause and fail, and all that stuff, telling us are we in a risk or no risk. Is that something what you're saying? Is that, is well, that a, a dashboard is one, can be one manifestation. I'd have to see it to, to see if it, it, uh, it has the right kind of value uh, that I, I would think you would need to know about. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like, well, of course, the, the knowing about a certain kind of bugs, does it have, a, do, the, do those bug reports, for example, have a severity? Where is the uh, uh, sense of speaking too, too much okay. testing e that I don't understand? How do you how do you know about problems right now? Well, in your in your product, let me twist this on you. Okay, you tell me what kind of value you've added, which which can help me understand. Okay, is that give you better a, than what I'm getting? Give you a good example. So I was on a project once where I found a bug on uh, in a flight simulator program, okay. and it was a a picture in the cockpit of the panel. There's a little label on the panel, like there really is on, in an airplane. Okay. And that picture of the of the panel had some text on how to use the controls for the pilot, which were really in the real airplane. But on that little picture was the logo of General Electric. And I wasn't sure if we, as a, a project, had permission to use that logo. So I filed a bug concern about the quality of the product, a concern about uh, a particular risk, um, not knowing if that was uh, true, but had a suspicion. So the severity or the impact to the customer was actually low. It wasn't crash or hang or lose data, right? But the priority I couldn't say. So there's a, there's a difference between severity, which is impact, and priority, which is urgency. Right. And that is, those are two elements of a bug report. So that's why I ask, do you have a sense from the problems that you're being, that you know about already, the severity and the priority of those right now with your existing dashboard? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are, if, if the tests that we have reviewed have passed and these tests are the ones which are focused towards our revenues, uh, well, I think we're in good shape if all of them pass, right? So, I mean, like, that's what I believe, so. Well, when you say pass, I'm concerned about that, because pass could mean several things. Pass means it met ex expectations under a certain condition. Yeah, I think that's what our... A certain environment. Yeah. But you could run the same test on a different environment, and it would fail. So even though that, that one test is a manifestation, a question about <coughs> a concern about something in the product, right? Okay. So our values as a testing company is to make sure, to the degree that we can do it. John, I need specifics. Can you give me specifics? I mean, like, I told you I'm like uh, uh, an e-commerce company, and what, what specific value can you as a testing company bring, bring to me? Okay, so the, I think to answer that, it's a lot about questioning. So a, a question is a test, just like you're doing now. You're questioning me. Okay. You're testing me, okay? You're trying to shine the lights on me, much like I'm gonna do with your products and services, okay? You're gonna ask questions that reveal um, different 
truths about the product. How does it operate, for example, in Windows Explorer versus Firefox versus Chrome versus Safari versus Opera? Now, you may not know what the market, market segmentation is of those browsers on your product, but we could find that out. And if Opera, for example, is only 2% of your user base, it may be something, an environment we test on last versus Chrome, which may have the higher priority. So instead of saying, oh, there's all kinds of tests we could do, let, let's wow you with all the things we can do and just run them on all platforms. No, you have to make business decisions based on value and impact. So our, our value is not to just assault you with tests, but to have meaningful conversations with you around context. Right? So I get I, one of the questions my, I might ask you, do you have data right now? If, if your product is browser-based, what market segmentation is there across the browsers? That's, that'd be one conversation we can have with your test leads to make sure we're doing smart testing. Okay. okay. So, so, so how should I understand in one line the value that you provide? The value is context-driven thinking. Is to have a conversation with you that elicits opportunities that we have to reveal important problems sooner rather than later. Okay, so you're right? saying context-driven thinking is the one that's going to lead us there? Well, I can't say it's going to lead you to any particular place. Okay. It's the, our value oh. as a testing company sure. is to have conversations that allow us to have return on investment for you sooner. So, so how do I look at the ROI? I need to look at the ROI. All right, let's, let's talk about, if, if you like what you hear so far, there's a lot that we haven't discussed, but the, the way this conversation is going, the, the give and take and the exploratory nature of it, not knowing what you're gonna say, what you're gonna ask, yeah. you not knowing what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna ask. Yeah. If, if you get a sense already that you, can, that you trust me to ask the right questions and not say, we're the, we're the best testing company, you're gonna love us. I can't say that. I want to let you decide that. So one thing that we might do, Reggie, is we might try a one-week trial of a pilot project. Okay. You can give us anything that you want to give us. Nice. And then we come up with a testing strategy that after asking some questions, and um, you can get a sense of what we might do in a week and then look at those results. I have a project in mind. Okay, let's hear about it. Yeah, so I think because uh, just give me a minute, I, I just need to check this email and I'll reply to you. Okay. All right. Shall we move on to Act 2? So, uh, well, yeah, uh, I have this project which is, which is uh, where, where our existing vendors have not been able to uh, uh, crack it as much as they've done with the others. It's like a, it's a new technology uh, that we have we've got from 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 some company, um, and this company got acquired, so we don't have support for that. So so we just kind of bought over their code, and our uh, testers and even developers are struggling to understand uh, <coughs> what to do with it. But but we we bought it at a high price and. And, and to show value, we have to integrate that into our to our existing system. So this is this is the, the you were seeking a context, right? So so this is the context. Uh, how are you gonna? How are you, as a testing company, gonna help in solving this problem that that other companies are kind of struggling? So what would your your approach be? And that's that's something that that I'd be interested to discuss. Okay, so let me see if I understand correctly. Yeah. This is a new technology you've got from an existing company. Your developers, you say, are struggling to understand it yeah. and integrate it into an existing system, presumably yours, something that you've built, or another thing that you've acquired? Yeah, something that we've built. This is the order management system. Okay, so this is an order management system that yeah. you've built, but what piece did you acquire? So, so we are. Uh, we want to replace the 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 existing order management system from the uh, from the code that we purchased from this company that got acquired. 
So you got it right. Okay. Yeah. So you've got an order management system yeah. that you've built. Yes. And you've got a new one. New one. You're right. Ah, so it's not Which, an integration, it's a replacement. Yes, you're right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And is there a timeline for this phase out of the old one? Or is it a, is it a hard switch? You're going to say, as of this date, gone. We're going to throw well, a switch the, in this new. The, uh, the, you know, the chips are too high, so we cannot afford to fix a timeline, get it done, and it fails on the production. You know, right, it's an order management system. All the orders on the day is just going to go go wrong, and we have we'll have to clean up a lot of mess. So, what so what I'm looking for is how would you approach this? What kind of metrics will you give me to track the progress and value that you're adding? I mean, like you you know, just as you said, you want to try something hard, and then show that you can deliver the value. Sure, and this is the piece. If you can crack this. We're done with sales with me. Okay, so with respect to this pilot that yeah. you want to try. Yeah. So let's say there are there are missions that I'd want to cover. Okay. To know what missions we want to cover in the first week, we need to do some exploration of the product. So that's unscripted, unrehearsed testing. So exploration where it's kind of like this conversation. In fact, it's exactly like this conversation. We want to get a sense of what this product is, this order management system, and to what degree okay. it, it operates and meets requirements. Okay, That is the, the model that we have in our head for, about what order management systems are supposed to do. Okay, okay. So our, our experience with existing order management projects that we've worked on before, and then taking a look at this and seeing what's different about it, what's, what's inherently more risky. So in the first week, there are opening activities, shall we say, like survey, surveying activities, getting to know this product by way of exploration, modeling what it is, what are, the, what are its features, what are the claims that are being made about this product, the, the, the claims marketing is making, what's the, what's the social zeitgeist around this? Is it a one star out of five, is it a five stars? What are the verbatims that it's getting so far? Because you're acquiring this, it's already in the market, right? Yeah. Okay. So this goes back to the thoughtfulness about our approach first. We want to make sure, to, to the highest degree reasonable, that we're covering those risky features first. Okay? So imagine a week's worth of 90 minute sessions where we spend testing toward a particular mission every 90 minutes. Okay? A mission. Is another way to look at it is a charter, like, a, like you charter a taxi or charter a bus to go somewhere. It's a mission statement for that spate of testing in those 90 minutes. Okay. So you get four to five sessions a day. Okay. Just and four? Yeah, about an eight hour day. I mean, you're, like, you want I have one? hundreds of test cases executed per day and you're talking just four? Well, these aren't test cases. Oh, okay. This, this, is, aren't test this is an approach to testing oh, that is, is okay. much different than test cases. Okay. Now, it's interesting though that there, I, I can talk a little bit more about the notion of a test case if you, if you care about that. But this is more around a, the, a particular kind of mission that's going to set the tone, like this conversation here. The mission is hopefully to get to an agreement on principles and tactics. And what I'm suggesting yeah. in terms of principles and tactics, the principle one of exploration of modeling the product for the purposes of knowing what its, what its capabilities are. And two, after that modeling, breaking up our testing into segments that are time boxed, but that are also, that also allow the tester to be creative, to use their judgment, to use their skill, to use all those, those um, traits that you would want in, in, a, technolo uh, in, in a technologist. Right? Instead of just following a procedure, okay. right? step one, step two, step three, checking a box and moving on. Right? The, in the initial offering, this is what it's about. It's, there's a name for it. It's actually, this technique is known as session-based test management. Mm -hmm. And in the first, in this pilot, that's you what think that's it you would get. In our context. I think it, I think it would work in your context because it's 
this project seems similar to one that we've done before. Okay. And nice. there's really the the power of this method is to expose a lot of uh, elements around what the pro product is supposed to do, so that we can be relatively confident of the the things that we need to focus on first. So when we deliver these artifacts to to I presume would be a test lead unless you're involved in the project. Um, let's assume that, a, that you're going to give us a test lead or a manager at your company to review our work. They could review it in real time, they can review it at the end of every day, but they would have anywhere from four to five sessions where we accomplish a particular mission and it would have our testing notes, any bugs that we found, and any issues that we'd like to escalate. Okay, Issues are things that might be bugs, but they're things that, that also are concerns that we have about the value and the, and the quality of the, of the product. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, I think, um, and when you're speaking these things as a business, I have to think about how do I get this into my company, right? Uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking about. It looks to me that my company right now is not ready for this kind of, should I call it as a revolutionary approach to testing? Uh, it, it depends on what your experience has been so far. If this sounds interesting to you and, and it makes you curious, then to some degree, I guess that might be a revolution that you're starting. That if you're feeling that sense of, you know, John, what you're telling me is we could find a better class of bugs sooner than, than a week of having another vendor do test cases and then running them later. We could give you better information more quickly, then maybe that's revolutionary to you. But when, when we were coming up with this method, it was revolutionary to me because it, it put words to things that I thought skilled testers already did. To be able to, to be free from a particular procedure, to explore the product and reveal weaknesses quickly using the, the experience and the skill of the tester and at the same time improve their experience and their skill as they test by learning, that to me was phenomenal. But it's also a way, it's, it's like this, it's like, like jazz, right? Jazz doesn't have sheet music, right? But this is like sheet music for jazz. You could look at it like we are musicians and what we want to give you is this Know, to keep our improvisation, but deliver to you some structure that you can uh, believe in and get a sense of what we're doing. How does that sound for the first week? About 30 mission statements of exploration, and we'll know what, what to do as we go along, as these, these uh, charters are fulfilled. Well, John, uh, it's, it's very different from what I've heard from other vendors, but, but let me tell you this. Proof is always in the pudding, right? So I'm gonna sign you up for a pilot. Okay. Um, so that's the deal right now. And I'm gonna sign you up for a pilot, but but the proof is in the pudding. So I am more interested. Excuse me, do you oh, want some more coffee? Yes, absolutely. I was waiting for it. I was like actually, you know, <laughs> drinking water, uh, <laughs> waiting for a coffee. Uh, and I think the restaurant service Perfect. needs to be improved a little bit, which is okay. Thank you very much. So I can I can see that you're an aficionado of, of quality service. You're, oh, you're right. That's a nice way of catching it, John. I would expect you're nothing a, less if we are yeah, late in delivering you coffee. I just become a fan by seeing that, right? Okay. So so the proof is the pudding. So uh, so I think you take this up. You run whatever your thirty missions. I don't understand your SPTM. It might be revolutionary. It might be great. But for me as a CIO, what I need is I need. Uh, uh, you know, you were talking about risks to be informed much earlier sure. and all this stuff. Sure. Show it to me. Okay. Show it to me, right? Okay, that's when I will be convinced. So just, you go to a lot of meetings, right? I do. That's so my let, let, me, let me put it like this. Right. It sounds like we're on the verge of a handshake. Imagine that I wrote up the minutes from this talk. My notes, right here. Right. Any concerns that I have, any follow-up questions I, oh, I should have asked in that, right? You probably, that's happened to you too, right? You leave a meeting, you forget. Realize later you should have. But as a CIO, I'm not supposed to admit that. Yeah, of course. This is okay. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Well, we're all we all learn. We all, that's part of being human. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So imagine a, a, a brief report from me at the end of this conversation. Mm -hmm. And that we're in session right now. The clock is ticking. Okay. 
Okay. You, we're gonna, this meeting is gonna end, and I'm gonna preserve this with the artifact. Our charter is get to know each other enough to see if there's business here. I don't know if we're the right company for you. I'm proposing this, this mission and these, these, this tactic. Uh, and yes, the proof is in the pudding for yeah. what you decide. Okay, sure. how's that? No All right. Good, no looks like we have a deal. And, and Thank you. And back home, whenever we do a handshake and we close a deal, we take a selfie. So you might if we, uh, okay. if I take a selfie, right? right. So, so we're going to take a selfie of, of this deal and so that this becomes the proof that All right. you know, we both have shook hands, we made this deal, and you're gonna show me some results sometime after a week or something. I'll just, I'll just, you know, I'll just, I'll just am actually busy with this system right now. So, uh, okay. Hi, good to see you again. Oh yeah, hi John. How are you? Good. How have you been? Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to this meeting, as you said. It's only the meetings that I have, right? So, so yeah. yeah. So what have you what have you heard so far? Because I have some things I can share with you. But how is it going from your point of view? Well, I've heard from my people that this is uh, something that they, uh, is very different from what they're experienced with. And uh, while there have been a lot of activities that are happening. There, but, but you know, I want to leave it to you to present uh, whatever you found out and based on that, how can we proceed or not proceed something, you know, we can actually just, we can actually discuss. Okay. Right. So have you seen any of the reports that we sent over or is that just the... I got too many emails, John. I prefer people to speak to me directly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, are you a bad news first? Kind of person, or a good news first kind of person. Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm I'm a no news guy, so I, I, I would like to have no no news. Okay, good and bad has no the same news. impact on me. Right? Okay, right. No, no. Tell me more about that. Tell me, tell you more about that. Well, you know, uh, uh, so uh, a good news usually follows a bad news, and bad news follows a good news. So. That's my preference of having no news at all. So, so you could you could tell me about your okay report. All right. right. So we plan to do thirty sessions, and we get we got ten of them done because the the product is horribly blocked in configurations and in, in trying to get the configuration set up for this. Uh, the the IT your IT team hasn't opened the firewalls we need to do a complete model of it. So that's a priority one issue on the project. Uh, Just make note of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what we found so far that we were able to test without the full, being able to fully integrate. Uh, we have five priority one bugs we're really concerned about. We've got data loss, which was pretty bad. Uh, complete corruption of, uh, of the database that we tried. And we wanted to make sure that just wasn't our fault because of the mis this misconfiguration. <coughs> and we confirmed that it's a true corruption because their, your team on your side was able to reproduce it. <coughs> so that leads us to believe that it's not just a network configuration problem. Uh, might be a, a, a real problem moving forward, but that's something that your team is already working on. And they said that they've been always trying to reproduce it but didn't quite know the details. And that's because they had, you, can you believe they had one, about a thousand test cases, they said they were running. Uh, and, uh, and automation running, as, as you know. Um, but when they, when, when they saw us, when they saw one of our, our session reports, mm -hmm. they said, we hadn't ever tried shutting down the system in that way and bringing it back up. And it's always been on and the data's been cached and the complete, a complete restart of this caused this corruption. So we found that fascinating. So instead of just executing the next charter, we wrote a new charter that we were going to do next and said, well, let's see to what degree this corruption is, is prevalent in, on, a, on another uh, framework. And we found a similar kind of problem. Mm. So, so there are, are more prior one issues like that. And when I say priority, I mean urgent. There's, there's a notion of severity and priority like I talked about last time. Severity is impact, how much it hurts, and priority is how urgent is this. 
So in our estimation, we found severity one issues, which we think are also high priority for us to move forward. Um, so we didn't, we didn't charge you for the full week. We only charged as much as we thought reasonable to get done. So there's actually budget left over. Because we, when we were blocked, we just we stopped. So we didn't think we could provide the value uh, on that. Now, the other things that we did that you might find interesting is we did a comparative market analysis. And we, we did take a look at eBay, actually, and, and how your order management system compares, because PayPal is one of their, their big yeah. uh, partners. Um, so we, we sent you a comparative market analysis on that, and it turns out you're in really good shape there. We didn't find any risks, at least in the charters that we unearthed in, in, in the initial setup. If I can interrupt you, mm -hmm. this competitor analysis thing that you did, is that testing? What it does is it informs us of a, of a scope, that a scope of considerations. Assuming that you care about the value of your product in different contexts. One of the contexts is to what degree is a competitor better or worse than us in terms of expectations? Well, is that my product, product owner or product analyst job? Well, it, it might be. We tried to get access to one, and we're still waiting to talk to them. Because they've been at a conference of some kind in, in Denmark. So, uh, so we we didn't let that stop us. We uh, we have a few business analysts who actually are testers now. They from business analysts before, and they said, you know, when in this project we we did a similar kind of thing, and here's what we should do. And so they they uh, made some interesting missions for us that we haven't executed yet, but that you can review them and say, hey. We may want to do these sooner rather than later if there's an extension to the project. So it's, it helps us understand the, the, this bigger landscape. We don't want to be tunnel-minded around this. Maybe other companies you've talked to say we can do test cases or even some, some exploratory sessions. It's not a, it's not a private methodology. It's, it's a public thing. That it's, a, it's an approach to testing a lot of companies can use. But what we like to do is make sure that we're providing, providing you this deeper sense of context. No, I, make sure I, it's I must tell you one thing that when you talked about context-driven testing previously, mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it much. But now I see from the story that you're telling me, it makes sense. You're saying we were blocked, so we looked into the other stuff, we looked into the other stuff. So that's, that's like you, you're really using the change of context, uh, the change of business context. That's what you're doing, I believe. So. Is that, is that how yeah, you understand? Here's an example. Okay. There's building the right thing, and then there's building the thing right. right. Okay. So one is a business problem, and the other is more of a testing problem. Hmm. We want to make sure we're covering both angles, not just the, the testing problem. Or it, 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 did you build it right? But maybe you're doing more than what you need to do in this, in this comparison. The, the feature set is the wrong feature set. Or it's, it might even be more quality than people need, the market segment that you're going after. Now, if this is out of scope, if you're saying, ah, I got business people, for which yeah. you may be saying, yeah. that's fair. But I just wanted to, to let you know, since this is just a pilot, this is just a, kind of a sample of what oh, we could okay. drill down in more. So you're free to say, oh, guys, come on. I got a team of PhDs doing this. Yeah, right. Okay? So it's part of the modeling process for us, anyway to yeah. really understand that we're giving you the right value. Because other companies may have come in, maybe you've heard this, best practices. Yeah. What we're doing is industry best practice. Yeah. You know, ISO 9000. Aren't you doing that already? I don't believe there are best practices. There are only, there are good practices, but there are practices in context. In like, fact, like, like session-based test management. Yeah, it's, it's a, to me, I think it's a good practice, but okay. if, Whenever you hear the term best practice, I, I invite you to just eliminate the word best and just say it's a practice. It's a practice. Yeah. What makes you, as you scrutinize other vendors, say what makes you think it's best? So I can't decide for you what's best. I can only decide for what, so, from what you're saying what okay. might be useful in this context, right? So, so, so I have some, some important questions. I like your story. Okay. But what I didn't get from your story is numbers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, at a CXO level, we only speak numbers. Like it or don't like it, we are not ready to unlearn and relearn. Mm -hmm. So what numbers can
can you give me from the great story that you said? That's all I'm looking at, sir. What kind of numbers are you expecting? Like, uh, I mean, right now, test number of tests, number of bugs we found. Because I don't know. You you are the test expert. You got to tell me what I am. The, I what, I consider myself what number, good in testing. Okay. Right. What what numbers does it make sense for the CX or level to track? That's all I want. I can't decide for you what numbers make sense to you. Uh, I'm, I'm actually worried. If I, that's why I want to hear John, from you about what your numbers. John, this is close to the deal. <laughs> this is close to the deal, John, and you're saying? My job is not to deceive you. And I, I'm worried that some of the numbers that you're used to seeing are deception. Like numbers of tasks. Numbers of tests that have passed. Well, look at Number of tests that have let failed. Me, let me give you this. We had a board meeting. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, Okay, investors and CXO sitting in, and we are reviewing the whole stuff of the, the IT spend. And you know, that's when yeah. the testing comes up. Okay. When the number gets bigger, they say, let's cut the testers. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the way it is. Here's some numbers. Right. Here's some numbers. $10,000 is what you spent with us so far of a budgeted 15. Uh, $5 million. That's the amount you will lose if you, based on our comparative market analysis by our, our estimate, uh, if you continue with the, the project in this way. You know? Now, how, how do you know that the numbers I've just spouted are true? Some of the ones are easy. You could say, well, I know what the budget is, yeah. but this five million, I expect scrutiny from that. So any number that we give you, we expect to be scrutinized. But the numbers we're gonna give you are all around number of sessions that we've done. Um, maybe the number of, of priority one bugs, but the explanation of what those are. So maybe we found a hundred, so, but... So should I, should I assume that your quality and productivity is increasing based on your increase in number of sessions that you're doing? Not necessarily. I, I would have to know how you define productivity. John, John I'm, I'm, I'm kind of open to change, okay? But I need your help. I'm not used to this change. I need your help to, to, to get the right metric that I need to track and how do I use that metric. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about what metrics you've seen in the past that you have thought, now that I can understand and I'm gonna have my test vendor or I'm gonna take this action on this metric yeah. and you've taken that action well, and it's become a better yeah, number. Yeah, so we've looked at uh, code coverage, we've looked at different kinds of uh, test case coverage, like features, how many test cases per, per feature. Okay, fine, so code coverage and, and test coverage. Yeah, so you see like the that. numbers and you, you had your people take some action. And defect and density, defect, you know, and those yeah, numbers defect went, leakage. Those this, numbers went up and that made you feel more confident? Yeah, I mean like, you know, if the defect, uh, if, if the leaked defects are, are, are going lesser and lesser, um, I'm a happy man, right? So that's, that's the way I'm supposed to be. So yeah, I, then, well, I'm worried then, uh, it, it, it just may, we may, may not be the, the company for you, because we're not gonna do defect density, and we're not gonna do test pass, because those are deceptive metrics. Yeah, but those aren't context-free metrics, my friend. Those, John, those need a context. John, I like your challenge. The problem here is that I need some numbers. I need some numbers. So are you saying just because you can't provide these numbers, you can't work with me? And like I have a lot of money to give you. Right? I need to I need to know what numbers matter to you in in a way that matter that can matter so, to me. So so uh, so as I'm the business guy, and I think I'm a lot smarter than than the testers. Um, can I suggest an approach? You work sure. with me for another three months. Okay. You figure out what metrics matter to me. Mm -hmm. Does that work with you? Yeah, that actually, let's do this. Let's continue with the same methodology. We'll, we'll work out what the problems are to get this configuration stuff yeah. done. And I'll give you a draft of what some metrics, some meaningful metrics might be for you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so and then you can, do. okay. So let's do that. Let's, uh, um, if you want to do an extension, we could do another week. You can commit us for three months if you like what you've seen so far. We, we need to talk more deeply about this than, sure, sure. than we can. We can have our test leads talk. Sure, absolutely. So, so okay. As we, are we done on this meeting? Yeah, let's do I'll send you the, the minutes and we'll, we'll Yeah, sure. And, okay. and you have three months till then I'm, I'm tracking my test cases. Yeah. Right? Okay. 
Well, we're not going to do test cases, remember. So yeah, I know. I'm, I'm saying we're tracking test cases for the next three months till you come up with, with the metrics that we can work with. We're, do, we're going to continue with sessions, not test cases. Yeah, which is fine with me, John. You're obsessed with that, I believe. Yeah, it's important to me. Yeah. It's important to me that we're clear on this. Okay, uh, okay so yeah, I'm going to kind of sign on that, saying you do your sessions, but at the end of the three months, you tell me uh, what happens. What okay. Are, okay, thank you. Yeah, right. Okay. Good. So, uh, all right. Uh, part four. Part four. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, uh, have you figured out the metrics that matters for us? Yeah, we, we think we've got some metrics that matter to you. Okay. Um, you certainly care about, uh, about the, the kind of bugs that we're finding in terms yeah. of uh, bug count. Yeah. It prov <coughs> it's an inquiry metric. We've agreed that it's not, it's not something we're judged by but that it, it provokes, provokes meaningful conversations. We say, we found X many bugs this week. It, it helps us have conversations about what's different this week than last week. For example, did we, did we put more testers on it? Did, did we get a new build? What are the things that are around that explain that metric? Okay? You're not just going, oh, uh, that's bad, we should react, or that's good, we should react. It's, hmm, what's going on here? Okay, so that's one of the things. Um, the, the number of uh, new sessions that we've created and the, the degree to which that has created more overtime on this project. Because we found some interesting things that your team has said, can you schedule this? Or sometimes they volunteer and they, your team has said, we just thought of this, can you add this in? So we added that, we're graphing the oh, number of okay. sessions that we're doing per day. Cool. That's meaningful because that's time. And time is money, and you're, that's what you're tracking. Okay. It also tells you to what degree we're staying involved on this project and, and as efficient as we can. And speaking of efficiency, one of the numbers that we gave you was each session, as you might have heard, has three components to it. The amount of time in that session which was spent testing or covering the product, the amount of time that session uh, required us to stop testing and drill into the bug, yeah. The bugs that we found, yeah. and the time that that session took to set up to be configured for so that testing could be done. Yeah. So remember the analogy of testing is like a bird looking for worms. We we spoke about that uh, uh, last time, and, and so we've given you metrics where our sessions have had high B times or high times where bugs have interrupted us from doing testing, and your team did an amazing thing, which we thought they would do, we hoped they would do, and they say, guys, we noticed that not only your B times, but your S times are this metric this day, and they're B this... B, S? Yes. Okay. The bug investigation... Oh, okay, okay, times yeah, I this. just try to make that specific. In fact, one of, your, one of your leads made a joke. They said, we need more T and less B, S. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's funny, you've heard that, but right? That could be a nice yeah. metric. And it is. It's a nice metric because it's all T is about coverage, and B's and S's are interruptions to T. Right? Yeah. The more time we find bugs and have to drill in and write them up and explain and investigate, the more time we spend configuring, the less time for testing. So we're really pleased that you reacted well to that. That's a meaningful metric because it's about time and it's about efficiency. So that, that has provoked conversations about how, to, they said, how do we get your B and S times down? How do we get set up to not take so long? How do we get the, you know, what, the, the bugs that you're finding not to take so long? And so one of our leads, you may have heard this, responded to the meeting, well, don't put the bugs in there to begin with, right? Yeah. And it was meant lighthearted, yeah. but the dev manager went to your senior dev manager and said, guys, can we do unit testing at least before we give it to those guys, yeah. us? And they did, they started this unit testing. Now, I'm, that, that's something. That provoked a conversation that led to more efficiency. Our, our sessions started to have higher tea times. So those are metrics that you should care about. Yeah, I think uh, I have a fair sense. I, I have to go to the part five meeting, by the way. And, and the way I have to go to the part five meeting is I need uh, the, the only help I need from you, John, is as we have changed this, this whole uh, paradigm, or we might change, I want you to be on some of the review meetings we are doing on the testing front, okay. so that you can you know, give the story to more people than just me, because I, you know, I kind of get it, but the problem is not that I get it. Okay, the rest of the people in the company has to get it. It is it's, it's like a cultural change in the company, right? Okay, okay thank you then. So I'm 
I am. Are you also coming to the part five meeting? If you are, yeah, right? no, you are yeah. part of it, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's it's the the reviews were pretty good. You were able to explain to the other, uh, uh, you know, okay, stakeholders about how this value is, but you know the one challenge that we now have is that we are going IPO. Okay, we're going yeah. IPO and uh, I see that you have a rock solid team right now, which is like five uh, testers, a lead and, and a manager and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Our current size is about 600 testers, right? Mm -hmm. And if we want to get this across the entire organization, because going an IPO means that we have to do a lot of marketing activities. There's a lot more load that's going to come on to our uh, website. Yeah. Right. So, so can can you quickly scale up there? I mean, like, can you make six hundred awesome testers in the next month or so? Oh, um, okay. So, if you like, if you're saying what we're doing is awesome and you want more of that yeah. in your company, I'll come up with a plan to see to what degree we can scale. Now, what, <laughs> what my first order of business oh, is going to be? Oh, saying it can can't be scaled. No, I'm saying it can be scaled, but it's going to take some time, right? So here, I want you to hear my approach. It's not to take all 600 testers and get them in a room for three days and say, uh, do these things, it's gonna be awesome. What I need to do is create uh, influencers. Five to 10 people in your organization, perhaps, that I could work with, that I can kind of uh, imbue them with the sense of mission but and value. there's gonna be resistance, John. You know, of course, sure, there people, always is. Right? Yeah, so part of that is, is seeing why they're resistant. To, to this method and honoring that. If, if yeah, they, they right now feel a threat because of you, sir. Well, I, I'm hoping that they can see that this is, a, they are part of a community. We may be a vendor, but we're part of a community, a larger community around the world of context driven wow. thinkers. Awesome. Conferences are going on right now. As we speak, there are people having role plays on stage oh. about this very thing that you and I are talking about. That's and crazy. the audience is taking notes perhaps and ready to scrutinize. There are conferences that have cards you can hold up and, and be called on and say, that's bullshit. Yeah. And in our industry, certification is, is bullshit and let me tell you why. So this is the part of, that I want to imbue upon you, right? Yeah. Is community, community. Your, your reputation and your standing in a community and I don't, I get, it's easy for me to say, I don't want your teams to be afraid of this. I want them to feel empowered by this. Okay? This is what we're about, creating a culture of, of thinking. Brilliant, John. You're my hero. Wow. I'm flattered. And, and I'm not saying this as a role play thing. I'm really saying this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. And scene. Are we done? Yeah, we're scene. done, John. We're done. All right. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. Alright, so, so I have some lessons, I think we have like 30 seconds left for some crazy thing. Yeah. Uh, so this was not easy to do, uh, I don't know about you Pradeep, but uh, as I said, Pradeep and I uh, had this conversation at last test and we did, we were actually talking about his new company and what I might do for his new company, uh, even though I'm, I'm, currently I'm happy with my, my role uh, at, at eBay. And we thought, wouldn't it be fun to reprise this in front of an audience and, and actually have me be the vendor? Because in real life, Pradeep is the vendor. Uh, and me be the vendor and him be the business guy. And so we talked about this. And so we came up with uh, five lessons each. Uh, and here are some of mine. Uh, conversation is exploration. Uh, you may have heard me work that in to explain to the CIO that, uh, about, a little bit about the approach of exploration, uh, that uh, I wanted to know that context will emerge during uh, uh, testing as much as it emerged during a conversation. And it's not about requirements, although you didn't ask me that, I thought for sure you would go there. Now, I didn't know exactly what he was gonna, or what he was gonna say or how he was gonna say it, but I was ready for that. It's about you know, building trust, about expectations. And, uh, and Pradeep, uh, some of your lessons were uh, those, so if you want to talk about those here. Yeah, I think some of them uh, okay, came out from, from the conversation itself. Um, 
sometimes we are up to solve a problem that's not necessarily a testing problem. So testing might be a stage three problem for a company. And when we go approach them, we try to think that that's their, that's their top priority problem. So, so solving some of their problems and then getting to testing might be a way. So, so that's, uh, and then uh, uh, sometimes what we've seen is people take things personally when, when you said, no, no, I don't want this SBTM stuff. No, I don't want this stuff. So if we become more uh, aggressive, which is good for James Bach, which is good for Pradeep Sandarajan, but not probably good for everybody else, right? So, so uh, and then uh, sometimes you might need to fire your client. I mean, like he, he almost got there and saying, oh, if this is exactly what you want, I don't want you. And that's, that's the most beautiful thing to say because he's navigating away from bad to what, what would be his natural fit, right? And then if you're, if you're a testing expert, your speciality is in salesmanship. Oh, well, this is something that I learned the hard way. I became an independent consultant in India. Uh, I was pretty good at testing. Well, uh, at least James is going to be silent when I say that, right? So I was pretty good at the, what's the testing, but I was not good at sales. So that's a skill that we have to pick up. And that's not something that comes naturally because we spend all the time learning testing, not sales. But we sometimes have to do sales. So, so those are some of the things, and then I think we can talk about questions. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much.